On a hot, windy day in November 1977, fire raced through the Morwell Open Cut. It was the largest fire ever in the Morwell Open Cut. Large sections of the Open Cut's northern batters and operating levels were on fire. Very large fires had previously occurred at Yalorn Open Cut. When the Morwell fire was finally brought under control three days later, the fire had caused $200,000 worth of damage to plant and equipment. Potentially in danger was almost half of the state's electricity supply. This could have had massive consequences for Victoria, which relies heavily on brown coal for power generation. Approximately 1,800 men were involved in the 1977 fire using the fire service system which the Commission installed for just such an eventuality. Luckily, there were no serious burns or injuries, thanks to the discipline and training of the men involved. Perhaps the most important factor about this fire was that it need not have happened. Investigations have revealed that the fire was almost certainly caused by human error, most probably smoldering coal falling from a vehicle's exhaust pipe. This film deals with the ways in which you can help prevent fires in Latrobe Valley open cuts and what to do if you see an outbreak. Brown coal is highly combustible. Brown coal has a moisture content of from 60 to 70 percent, but when it dries, it can easily catch fire due to a variety of causes. In all open cuts, there are a number of important rules concerning fire prevention. One of the most important is the prohibition on the coal levels of vehicles, which do not have approved exhaust systems and carry knapsack sprays. When a vehicle travels along coal levels, it frequently travels through wet, slushy areas created by rain and rotating sprays. Wet coal slurry can be splashed on the hot exhaust, where it quickly dries out and ignites. The burning coal then drops onto the coal surface as the vehicle continues along the coal level, starting a chain of spot fires. On a vehicle with an approved exhaust, the likelihood of this happening is substantially reduced, although not completely eliminated. There is a right and a wrong way of driving through the open cut. Here is an example of how not to drive. By traveling quickly, the driver causes large amounts of wet coal to be splashed on the front of the vehicle. The coal will eventually dry out, and if it's in contact with the exhaust pipe, will ignite. When driving along coal levels, take it easy. There is a maximum speed of 15 kilometers an hour. Negotiate wet areas gently, and when you've gone through, check your exhaust pipe to make sure no coal has splashed onto it. If there is coal on the exhaust, wash it off quickly. Sensible driving through the open cuts means that the risk of fire is greatly reduced. Reckless driving not only endangers your life and those of your passengers, but increases the possibility of fire. The SEC considers it essential that all personnel working in the open cut know how to fight fires and keep the fire service system constantly at the ready and that personnel have been trained in the different methods that have been adopted when fighting a fire in brown coal. One thing you will not often see at the start of a brown coal fire is flame. In the majority of cases, the coal merely smoulders Sometimes the only evidence of a fire is the smoke and smell, and it must be checked immediately. In windy conditions, the fire spreads quickly, with sparks being blown from level to level. In this demonstration, note that the firefighter is spraying the smoldering coal, rather than hitting it with a direct jet of water. Spraying has the effect of soaking and cooling the fire whereas a direct blast from a jet of water can cause the fire to spread. When the brown coal is taken to the power station, it is stored in bunkers. The coal dust which settles there is very fine and dry and is highly flammable. This demonstration shows just how explosive the coal dust can be. When fighting smoldering coal, adopt the correct method. Spray the fire. Do not hit it with a jet.
Smoking is prohibited in all areas of the open cut below grass level and within 30 metres of exposed coal surfaces, in conveyor galleries and bunkers, on and within 10 metres of the travelling stacker and within 10 metres of any conveyor. Any person found smoking in these areas will be disciplined. In this regard, the fire regulations provide for instant dismissal. A burning cigarette dropped on coal does not take long to ignite the coal. Not all fires in the open cut are caused by human error. Machines can cause them too. These can occur when there has been a breakdown in the equipment. Fires on or about conveyors are common. Conveyor fires are caused by a number of things, including overheated idler bearings. Friction can generate extreme heat in a faulty idler. If stopping the belt will cause the belt to burn through, let it run and play a hose on the hot idler. Stopping the conveyor causes the hot idler to remain in contact with the section of the belt. Before long, the conveyor may catch fire. Hot idlers can occur both in the carrying side and the return side of the belt. If the fire is due to other causes and running the belt is causing the fire to spread, stop the belt and use plenty of water to protect the belt and extinguish the fire. If you have to use a fire hose, here is the procedure. Each red fire hose box contains two hoses and a branch. Two hoses joined together will cover a distance of 60 meters and should be operated, if possible, by two men. The first man opens the hose box, puts down the lid and takes the branch from the box. The second man removes one hose and connects it to the hydrant. He takes the other end of the hose and moves quickly in the direction of the fire. The hose is pulled straight to remove any kinks. Meanwhile, the first man with the branch and the other hose has moved to meet the man with the hose on the hydrant. The two hoses are connected together. The first man continues to ward the fire, connecting the branch to the hose as he goes, while the second man returns to the hydrant. When the first man is ready, he signals for water to be turned on slowly and only as much as he can control. Be careful not to direct water at any electrical equipment or overhead power lines. Fixed conveyors are protected by bird's mouth sprays, operated by opening valves marked Conveyor Bird's Mouth Spray Valve, white letters on a red background. They could be used for dousing a hot idler, but their main purpose is to protect the entire conveyor in extreme fire danger conditions. The main valves for these lines may be located on one side of the conveyor belt only. If you find yourself on the other side of the belt, do not attempt to climb under or over. This is extremely hazardous and can cause serious personal injury. Fixed conveyors have walkovers at strategic intervals, and the extra few moments taken to cross at these points may not make any appreciable difference to the fire, but may save you from injury. Control valves for bird's mouth sprays are located at regular intervals along the conveyor. Remember again, in case of a hot idler, do not turn off the conveyor belt as this increases the risk of fire. Not all fires on conveyors are caused by hot idlers, so determine the cause and effect of the fire before you act. Water is the main weapon used on coal fires. If used on burning liquids, for example an oil fire, it can take longer than necessary and cause the fire to spread unless special techniques using fog nozzles are used. There are four main types of extinguishers and it's important to be familiar with their best uses. Foam extinguishers are light blue in colour. They are exceptionally good on burning liquid fires. They operate for approximately one and a half minutes of spraying and are capable of extinguishing quite a large fire. Pull out the safety ring. Holding the director in one hand, squeeze the handle on top of the extinguisher with the other hand. Direct the stream of foam to fall onto the fire. Use the canister upright. 
Once the fire is extinguished, refrain from wasting the foam in case there is a reflash of the fire. The red extinguisher with the black band contains CO2 or carbon dioxide gas under high pressure. This is for use on electrical fires and is also suitable for burning liquid fires. Pull out the pin. Swing the horn up. Squeeze the handles. Sweep the gas at the seat of the fire. If possible, wear protective gloves for the cylinder becomes extremely cold and can freeze the skin of your hands to the metal. Do not touch an electrical cubicle on fire. Insulation inside may have burnt through and the cubicle may be alive. When the cubicle has been isolated and access is required, don't open the door while standing directly in front. The fire is likely to whoosh out, seriously burning anyone in its path. The correct procedure is to stand to one side. Open the door carefully, allowing for a sudden gust of flame and aim the extinguisher at the seat of the fire. Care must be taken also because the stream of gas from the CO2 extinguisher may disperse fine coal dust which may have built up inside the cubicle and allow it to ignite. When the fire is out, do not attempt to investigate the damage as there could be live electrical wires. Leave this job to qualified electricians. Remember, do not touch the isolated cubicle. It is wiser to prevent fire from spreading to another plant than to risk electrocution. The BCF extinguisher is yellow. It is a general purpose extinguisher, also suitable for electrical fires. The extinguisher is carried in all mobile plant and most vehicles. It contains a vaporizing liquid under pressure. To operate, simply push up the thumb catch and squeeze the handle while aiming at the base of the fire. Fumes are given off by the chemical and are liable to be dangerous if inhaled. The stored pressure water extinguisher is red and contains only water. It will operate for approximately one and a half minutes. It is suitable on wood, coal and paper fires and is dangerous if used on electrical fires. As with a heavy foam extinguisher, the canister should be picked up carefully to avoid personal injury and carried to the fire. Pull out the safety ring. Holding the director in one hand, squeeze the handle on top of the extinguisher with the other hand. Direct the water at the base of the fire. Use the canister upright. Once the fire is extinguished, refrain from wasting the water in case there is a reflash of the fire. The four standard types of fire extinguishers are, from the left, a red with black band CO2 extinguisher for electrical fires, a blue stored pressure foam extinguisher for fighting burning liquid fires, a red stored pressure water extinguisher for fighting coal and paper fires, and a yellow BCF general purpose extinguisher for all types of fires, including oil and electrical. The wind may affect the performance of all extinguishers, so attack the fire from upwind. This also keeps you out of the smoke. The 90 centimeter railway track at Yulon and Morwell open cuts is the site of frequent fires. Spillage from the coal trucks is common. Occasionally, particularly on hot, dry, windy days, the coal along the track is ignited by sparks, most commonly thrown by the train's braking system. When this happens, spot fires break out along the track and unless attended to quickly, can spread to the timber sleepers below the rails. Hoses and water outlets are situated at various intervals along the track. If there is fire on a loco, prevent danger of electrocution and have the driver lower the pantograph first before attempting to extinguish the fire. Do not climb on top of the loco or coal trucks without an access permit. This requires that the overhead wire is isolated and earthed in the vicinity of the loco. Avoid playing a continuous stream of water onto the overhead wire. The SEC not only observes all fire restrictions imposed by the Country Fire Authority, but also imposes its own fire alerts on other days when the danger of fire in the open cut is considered high. 
SEC personnel will be warned of these alerts from two sources. First, you will notice the flashing red lights, which are situated on the fire service office, the conveyor control center, the stacker, and on all dredges. In addition, the following warning is relayed through the Open Cuts radio systems. This is an Open Cut fire alert. All welding and burning activities are prohibited. All vehicles without permission from the fire service officer are banned from coal levels. Non-operating dredges should have all fire hoses connected. Dredger crews shall turn on machine fire alert lights. Radio traffic is to be kept to essential traffic only. All personnel are alerted to watch for fire outbreak. This is an open cut fire alert. All personnel are asked to follow these instructions carefully, both for the safety of personnel as well as the security of the plant and equipment. So far, we've seen examples of fires which can be caused by carelessness or damaged and faulty equipment. But nature itself can sometimes take a hand. This is a hot spot being excavated, burning on the southern batter of the Morwell open cut. It is a fire which has been smouldering for many years, caused by the combustible properties of the coal itself. Fire service officers are aware of the presence of hot spots and keep them under constant surveillance. However, report them to fire service if they appear abnormal. Your safety and those of your workmates may one day depend on your reaction to a sudden outbreak of fire at the open cut. Remember these points. Drive carefully when on the coal levels and minimize the amount of coal coming in contact with the exhaust systems. Wash the exhaust after the coal does splash onto it. If you see smoke coming from a conveyor, Establish the cause and take appropriate action. Play water on the heated parts and call the fire service on extension 3377 at Morwell Open Cut, extension 2252 at Yalorn, extension 6333 at Loyang. Keep a lookout for smouldering coal along the railway tracks. The loco driver will not always see an outbreak. Observe the restrictions during periods of fire alerts. Report the use or damage to firefighting equipment so it can be maintained. Remember, fire in the open cuts is everyone's business. <laughs>